Welcome back to the Beginner's Guide to the Modern Theory of Polarization, a series of modules to help you understand how the electric polarization is defined, calculated and measured in bulk periodic solids. Brought to you by Schrodinger's Kittens Productions. In this module, we'll revisit the two weird properties of the polarization that we identified earlier. First, that the polarization is multivalued. And second, that the polarization in a non-polar system can be non-zero. By the end of the module, we will have convinced ourselves that, the, that these properties are actually not so weird after all. In fact, you should already have suspected this when you completed the exercises from module two, and here we will formalize what you found. Let's go back to our centrosymmetric one-dimensional chain and calculate the dipole moment per unit volume in the two unit cells shown, taking the, taking the left edge of the cell to be the zero of position in each case. For the left-hand unit cell, we get the value P is equal to Q over 2, and for the right-hand cell, P equals minus Q over 2. Now let's repeat this procedure, calculating the dipole moment per unit volume for the same two unit cells in the one-dimensional polar chain. This time, the polarization for the left-hand unit cell is Q times D over A, whereas that of the right-hand unit cell is Q D over A minus Q. But look at what happens when we take the difference between the polarizations in the non-polar and the polar chains using the same unit cell in each case. For the left-hand unit cell, we get a polarization difference delta P, which is Q times D over A minus a half, which is exactly the same as the polarization difference for the right-hand unit cell. So we can conclude that the difference in polarization between two structures is a well-defined single value and doesn't depend on the choice of unit cell that we use to calculate it. While we know that the polarization is a lattice of values, there is no lattice of polarization differences. In fact, we say that the polarization difference is independent of the choice of the branch on the polarization lattice that we use to calculate it. In the exercise for this module, you should make a list of the experimental methods that you know of, or look some up if you don't know any, for measuring the electric polarization. Then think about what is really being measured in each case. Is it a polarization or is it a difference in polarization between two states. When you're happy with your answers, come back and join us for module five in the series, when we'll explore one particular method for measuring polarization, the Sawyer-Toyer measurement, in detail. Thanks for listening.